Hey, what's up everybody? This is Billy. I'm turning on the camera really quick one more time to make another video. This is basically going to be for my old YouTube page or my YouTube page and my old social media Facebook page because some of you guys may know I have a new Facebook page as of the last three months or so and uh, some of you went over there and signed up so that's cool but uh, I'm not bringing any of this... Um, uh, NPD stuff as I've said before over there or you know I'm, I'm really gonna try to just keep that page about the light about the love about the positive energy and gratitude and a celebration of what's good I know that sounds kind of corny but I'm really gonna try to do that you know and um, do it in the spirit of having learned and recognized the depth and the capacity and the potential for social media so but I really do want to keep talking about this because who would believe you know I would have never believed you know three and a half years ago that you know going through and navigating all the things I've had to navigate in the last 13 years of my life uh, for better for worse for indifferent that I would be learning a lesson about this thing called narcissistic personality disorder. I never, like, I've said it before, I never even knew it was a thing. I thought if someone said someone was a narcissist, it just meant that they were arrogant or they looked in the mirror a lot. I, you know, as far as the glossary of terms, uh, the application, the recipients, I, I didn't know it. So I've had to learn so much in such a short period of time and going on two months now of no contact with the person that I was in the relationship with as a uh, in the form of covert narcissism that I said many times, I didn't even find out until I was 16, 17 months into the relationship, the basics of what I was even dealing with, just hankering and pining and spinning until that time, just trying to figure out what was going on and by my own very nature, blaming myself for things that I had no control over or believing in the projections that were be being put out and deceived as a consequence, you know, and that's my fault, you know, but in the biggest sense of the picture, as I've gotten out and I've gotten more clarity, I think the, the most important thing is, is that it's amazing because, as I've said many times, you know, I had prayer in it right from day one, you know, even months before I left for the first visit, I had prayer in it and got it. And I, and I, and I think, you know, there's a couple of different reasons, and I think in one video I may have talked about it, uh, as to why I think... God facilitated, manufactured this particular relationship to teach me things and give me insight into things and perspective on things that I had not yet experienced directly to gain a better understanding of it for the reasons that he wanted me to gain a better understanding of it. All my emotions out of the side, all my uh, risk and trouble and tribulation in it, you know, all that aside, I got to look at what role did God have in it? And cause I certainly know I had him involved in it. <laughs> so there's that too. Um, you know, it's amazing because I, I continue to find new teachers. And as I've said before, a lot of the teachers, they cover the same kind of basics about the showings and the, um, manifestations or the, um, mechanisms of the disorder and basically it always comes around about to the same kind of circle but everybody has their own unique experience or perspective and understanding of it and in by having that plethora of different teachers um, it helps us it helps me to gain more insight into what exactly I was dealing with and where about I was scaled on it but the most amazing thing the reason I actually wanted to turn on the video is okay we've been through that whole thing already with me and with what's happening and some of the insights and some of the reasons why but what's really quite amazing is, is I posted that video below from Lisa LeBlanc and I wanted to say something about Lisa LeBlanc of all the teachers out there Lisa LeBlanc was the first person when I was actually back in August of 2022 and I was five days into my hotel stay with my covert narcissist she is the first person who came up in my YouTube feed and she has many videos that have similar or like names so I can't point to which one it was and I've tried to find it but it was something like 10 signs 
to know that you're in a relationship with a female covert narcissist. And I remember that was the first video on the topic that I ever seen, the first one to enter into the, to the gate. Ironically, I knew something was wrong, as I've said, months before that, and I just couldn't put my finger on it, and I started doing some research, but I started barking up the wrong tree. And I went into the red pill community. Guys like Richard Cooper, Coach Corey Wayne, Rolo Tomasi. And even though they had some interesting perspectives and insights into what could be going on in the interdynamics between uh, a relationship between a man and a woman, um, where a guy's trying to court a woman or, or whatever, or a woman's trying to manipulate a man for certain things. They talk more about masculinity and hypergamy, but there was never any mention of the involvement of the rampant spread of what are cluster B personality disorders, you know, vulnerable narcissists, overt narcissists, covert narcissists, and all the mechanisms and stuff. So that was oddly missing. So as I was listening to Coach Corey Wayne and Richard Cooper and Rolo Tomasi and guys like this, I was gleaning on some things like, oh, you know what? That would have really helped me when I was 17. That would have really helped me when I was 19. That would have really helped me when I was 21. But, the, but it was only, but it didn't make sense to me because we're not dealing with people who are playing the dating pool. We're not dealing with young women who are entertaining suitors in a hypergamous manner. Hypergamy, I learned from them. And that's just basically, I don't think there's anything wrong with hypergamy. It's just a woman simply seeking out by nature what is best for her and her life. The best man, the most responsible man, the man who can give her the life that she wants, the man who can provide children for her and create offspring. So these guys sometimes talk about hypergamy like it's an enemy or like it's a bad thing, but it's not. It's just a woman seeking to do the right thing for herself. So I learned about that from them, but something was, it didn't match. And and so I was left scratching my head going, no, this is not it. You know what I mean? Like when they talk about when you're dating a woman, if she's playing this game or that game, and I was like, it's not really what I, what I'm sensing here in this relationship. It's, it's something else. Anyway, to get back to the point, it wasn't until August of 2022 that I found Lisa LeBlanc because I had been searching red pill and I would do word searches like, you know, um, drama with your spouse or what or drama with your girlfriend you know just try to find information about what could be root what it could be rooted in or what could be causing it and like i said i kept going back to the red pill and somehow it must have um uh what's the word uh, uh created the um algorithm to understand kind of what i was looking for the internet and what it ended up giving me was my first video from a specialist on personality B disorders like narcissism and it was Lisa LeBanc and she came up while I was in the hotel room and I started playing it in my headphones and I was so taken aback by the video which was basically called 10 ways to know that you're entering into a relationship with a female covert narcissist by the first four or five things she said I just I was in shock I was in shock and I excused myself. I left the hotel room and I went into the lobby for 90 minutes and sat there and I listened to that video twice and I couldn't believe it because I felt like, I, I from that moment I didn't look at the girl the same way again. I knew. And I remember it was a point where I was so shocked. I went into the hotel and I, back into the room and I acted like I was all normal. And then I started playing it like, Because I was playing YouTube videos while I was there anyway, like music or something like that or something about guitar playing or whatever. And I just started pushing play while she was walking around in the room doing her things, you know. And I remember I was just watching her reactions. And by the time Lisa LeBlanc got to number two, it triggered her. It triggered her. And she was like, what are you listening to? Why are you listening to that stuff? What is that about? What What is this about? Why are you listening to? Turn that off. Turn that off. And it was like, and then that was even like part two of the video was that she was reacting to this video and what this woman was saying because everything that the woman was saying was exactly what she was doing. That was the first time I heard about things like um, future faking or mirroring and, and triangulation and gaslighting. Okay, so anyway, just wanted to give Lisa LeBlanc her props where her props were due on, in, that, in, that, in that way. But I want to say this too. There's probably of the you know six or seven videos I've made on this topic, where I've 
tipped the hat and said, the ironic thing is, is that in the uncovering of this, I've actually been able to resurrect other past relationships, not with women necessarily. I'm not talking about relationships with women. All my um, relationships with my LTRs or my long-term relationships in the context of a man and a woman, I've never experienced it. But other relationships, family relationships, wherein it blew the lid off of it and I knew what I was dealing with. It was like, that explains that. And the reason I bring this up now is because that video I posted from Lisa LeBanc, you know, about the triangulation below my last video that I posted, um, the way she describes what, for one, let me just say this, in the context of the relationship I've been on a no contact with for two months, one of the ways that Lisa LeBlanc says is that they'll invite a friend. They'll say, oh, I got this new friend. And then they'll say, oh, I don't know about this friend. And then meanwhile, she's your narcissist that you're in the dark about is speaking despairingly behind your back about you. And then her friend, she's speaking despairingly about behind her back to, to, to you. You know what I mean? So it's like they, because they, they want to play the puppet master. Anyway, I've been so shocked because I just wanted to say that about that. But um, in the context of, you know, family members, you know, uh, it's really, particularly with, with triangulation, you can see what has drawn so many wedges and created so much insecurity in family matters as a result of narcissists within the family unit um, using triangulation. And I could recall the shocking first revelations that I had an experience of triangulation with direct family members real time that shocked me and I had no idea why they were doing what they were doing but that was the point in time where I withdrew myself from certain members of my family directly and even associatively on social media because I was just so appalled by their behavior and what they were doing and specifically in the Lisa LeBlanc video I, I recall there was a period where I went back for a funeral of a family member and uh, I was with other family members and two of the family members were saying some incredibly horrible and disparaging things about another family member and I and, okay for one when they did that I was taken aback I was like why are they saying that about this person why are they saying that about this person I always liked this person I always thought this person was nice and they were still alive that person at that time I said I always thought this person was nice and they always made it like this person was nice but they were saying these horrible things about this person but then the shocker was is they said we're gonna go see this person's um, ex-wife because this person's ex-wife was an outside member of the extended family that had kept involvement in one way or another and plus that person had just been to the funeral of the direct family member of myself and the two people that I'm talking about in question and then they went and they talked about this guy who they were just complete speaking completely disparagingly about and trashing like he was like this great guy to his ex-wife and that really shocked me because I had to be put in a position where not only was I shocked by what they said to me about this guy, and I wondered why, and I didn't voice it, but then they played the part of the two-faced, double-faced hypocrite and went and acted like he was someone else, and then I was supposed to view that and think that that was just normal behavior, you know? So that was a great example of just triangulation and hypocrisy and double standards. And more than anything, more than anything, this whole no, uh, uh, narcissistic personality disorder, cluster B personality disorder. Ha, I've said I've never experienced it in the context of a romantic relationship, and that is true. And it's a totally different flavor when it comes in the context of a, of a, of a romantic relationship. But unquestionably, I have experienced several aspects of it in the context of a direct family unit that carries on to this very day, to, to this very day, to this very moment. 
that is what is most mind-blowing about it. Not only did my research experience and new learned comprehension and application about this scaled cluster B personality disorder give me understanding about what was going on in a relationship with a woman who I bought rings for and wanted to marry, but it blew the lid off of a bunch of different mysteries in my own family unit. And triangulation, saying one thing about one person to another, then another thing to another person about the other. And, and, and I know this now beyond the shadow of a doubt, as I knew then, even though I didn't know categorically what it was. Uh, if a family member will come to you and talk horribly to you about another member of the family, but then when they're in front of that other member of the family, it's all good, it's all... Know this beyond the shadow of a doubt. They will, are, and will always do the same thing to you. 